at um, professors becoming actually students or learners in a development of apps for the iPhone or for Android or for any of these handhelds that uh, our students are using nowadays. So that's the broader topic. Um, the issue, obviously, that uh, we've all come to realize is that uh, technology is moving towards handhelds uh, moving away from desktop. Um, lots of students use their smartphones for education purposes. They use the iPad. They use all sorts of handhelds, really, and, not, and notebooks included. So um, this is, uh, you know, um, this is kind of encouraging professors now to become, uh, you know, app developers as well so they can help their students with uh, uh, content. Um, the, the handhelds have a unique uh, characteristics that help our students learn very, very quickly because, of course, they can carry them around wherever they're, they're going and then they're, you know, they're used to the keyboard or the touch screen and so forth. So it's easy for them to actually use uh, this tool. Um, I think that uh, the handhelds also uh, encourage uh, what some people have called pedagogy 2.0. This is where we're using uh, web 2.0 tools uh, to support knowledge. And uh, this happens in a social constructivist uh, uh, learning approach. Uh, web 2.0 tools are basically about sharing information. And you share information that you either developed yourself or share information that you got from some place else. I mean, you're trying to pass it on to some other place. And something can happen in between that you can. Um, you can remix the information that you got, or the pictures, the mountain media, whatever it is, you can change it before you pass it on to the next person. So that's what's happening with Web 2.0. Um, as far as our social constructivism is concerned, um, this is where we encourage our students to become uh, you know, more autonomous in their learning. But so when you apply this to professors, professors as students are becoming more autonomous in their learning. Because um, you know, when you graduate from grad school with a PhD, you've been trained in certain fashion. You've been trained to teach certain courses, perhaps. Then when you go to work um, in the university setting, uh, you might be asked to teach something else that you did not do. And apps is one of those things that has actually just sprung up on people that graduated five, six years ago and uh, probably do not even do apps then. So what do they do? They have to become learners. And uh, they have to do that on their own. Uh, they also have to express agency. And uh, they have to have uh, passion for what they're doing, more on a personal level. Well, coming to work uh, settings, investors are more and more um, you know, enrolling students that uh, are digital natives uh, or digital citizens, as they've been called by other people. But these are a group of people that have grown up in this environment where computers are the norm. Uh, they've used them for a long time. They know how to use email. The keyboarding skills are great. SMS skills are great. Uh, they can find things in the database pretty quickly. They maybe rather use a computer to read than an actual textbook. So if we are going towards, uh, if we're encouraging these people to come to our schools, we have to also step it up as teachers to meet these people uh, at their level. So I say that uh, their skills are different. They've been called 21st century skills. They have a higher uh, literacy rate for media, and um, the technology skills are great also. And they can also share all sorts of content, like video and all sorts of multimedia, through things that they create themselves, like a web page, for example, and then they upload you know, videos of all kinds and uh, mix things around. So investors have realized this is our uh, uh, clientele. Uh, so as a result, investors envision that uh, the time, or even that now, uh, the time being now, basically, where um, we have to transform our teaching practices as teachers. Um, one of the ways that we have to do this is uh, we have to learn these skills over and over again, or as they, you know, uh, become required uh, so that we can help our students also become better learners. Uh, in my uh, experience uh, with this uh, apps development I'm talking about, I first had to learn the skill myself and it took a long time, you know, like four or five months to perfect uh, the skill and also to design 
curriculum so that I can be able to teach the students. But once I bring it out to them, they become self-motivated learners and then they take it up themselves. So investors have to begin to facilitate this process. And uh, there is also an appearance of a disconnect between what uh, PhD students or doctoral students are learning and what they begin to teach. Because when you go get a job, um, the first thing that you require to do is to teach your strengths. So they'll be like, okay, I'm so under, you're good at this, this is what you're going to teach for a while, and you start teaching that. But as we start bringing in these students from diverse backgrounds with different needs and different skills, skills levels, and then we look at the market that the students are going to go out into, we have to prepare these students for that market. Part of the preparation for that market is learning new skills like app development. So professors that want to learn that really have to do it well so that they can help the students going forward. So faculty development is, um, I mean, it's a broad topic, but uh, I picked up a few things that uh, have helped uh, in my uh, faculty development towards this goal that I'm trying to achieve. The first one is uh, collaborative learning, where um, you participate in forums with other people, other professors, or just other people that are doing the same thing. Uh, these forums are all over the place. You can start from, you know, Googling something that you're interested in and find the forum, and then people will show up and you start working with them. Um, there are a lot of benefits that are derived from uh, collaborative research uh, with different people. Uh, one of the benefits is actually getting an inside of you. So for example, if you're going to uh, develop uh, apps for the iPhone and the iPad, Apple has people that are willing to talk to you on the phone. So if you have a problem, you know, you ask them and then you identify the, the line, uh, the code that's uh, giving problems and somebody will be able to help you. But in addition to that, there's other people around the world that are also doing similar things and uh, you can work with them and so forth. There's also a lot of electronic resources. Um, if you're going to work on your own, rather than go for a seminar or workshop, you can rely a lot on YouTube. YouTube videos are all over the place, created by different types of people, you know, 12 year olds, 14 year olds, 20 year olds, 50 year olds, all kinds of people from all various places around the world. They have developed all these tutorials that you can follow. So all you need is the time, take the time to learn. But the trying to resources are one of the best. There are also factors that challenge uh, learning uh, new technologies. Um, one of them is uh, the variety of support uh, personnel. If you're going to rely on people you do not know, to help you go through uh, either a tutorial or uh, understanding a line of code, they might not exactly know where you're coming from. So there could also be some language barriers in some instances. Also time differences. If you live in uh, South Africa and you live here, uh, when you wake up, they're going to sleep. You know, when they wake up, you're going to sleep. I think that. So there could be like, difficulties in trying to collaborate in that, in that uh, regard. Also, a uh, question of productivity. How much do you want to push yourself? One of the things that uh, is a problem with uh, learning something by yourself is, uh, you know, maybe procrastination, which everybody does to an extent. But you really have to step it up and to be very motivated and aim for a higher level of personal productivity. And then when you bring this, uh, these tools to students, you want to analyze their achievement data. So students are going to come into your classroom with uh, different levels of skills. And uh, the idea is to, at the end of the semester, to bring them to a level that we are not at, uh, to help them design something that they really feel they're proud of. Um, but in doing that, you know, as you go uh, along the semester, you have to be able to encourage them to see where they are at that point and then encourage them to do better, show them different things that they can do, show them different uh, electronic resources that maybe they were not aware of and just be there as a support system. And then when you do that, you document growth. Uh, nothing shows the student that you're doing much better, that they're doing much better than actually seeing progress. And this could be the same for a professor as a learner. When you start learning, don't be scared of you know jumping to something new. Just jump into it and start learning, but you, pro you document the growth that you're having. And similarly with students and professors, everybody will be, you, you'll be happier if you see some progress in that regard. Also, um, support facilities that uh, facilitate learning could be a problem. Um, the biggest challenge for most people is having the right software to use. 
But if you're going to do, for example, iPhone uh, OS uh, apps or iPad, the software is just right there. So it's have nowhere to look. And the app will be, you know, gladly give it to you and uh, you'll be able to use it. Uh, if you're going to do that Android apps, then you have to look through the means as well, but the, the facilities are there to help you. But then the hardware too could be a problem. If you don't have a good computer like this one, uh, you know, you might feel handicapped in a way. So you want to get the best hardware and the best software together. And uh, if you have support behind your back from uh, different people in the forums, uh, or from institutions, or people you 